Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the Yeasty Beasties, yes my new sandwich shop. Today we're going to be focusing on new Vancouver features for Decision Builder. So I've created a brand new app in App Engine Studio and as usual we'll be building out some features and capabilities to look at what's new in App Engine Studio and especially around Decision Builder. Let's get to it. So let me just make sure that you're caught up with where I am. So I've done a few things already to get us ready to showing you this functionality. So what I have done is I've created a brand new app, the Yeasty Beasties. And what I have done is created a couple of tables. So what we're going to aim to achieve with this is we're going to put in a sandwich order. So what we're going to do with that sandwich order is we're going to specify a few different things that we want on our sandwich. And then at the end of it, it's going to suggest what that sandwich is, what that price is going to be and how long it's going to make. So there's a few different kind of, um, you know, sides to this. So let's just crack on and get into it. So let's have a look at this. In the data, I've already created a table for sandwich order, which I have extended from task. So if we wait for it to load, there we go. There's a few new fields that I've added in here. We've got bread, we've got cheese, and each of these have a few different choices, which you can see bread, you know, we've got, you know, white, rye, wholemeal, sourdough, cheese, we've got the likes of um, cheddar, Swiss, mozzarella, and uh, pepper jack. So there's a couple of other fields as well, which we will come to. If I show you the form layout, I've got rid of a lot of the stuff on the basic form that we don't need for this uh, order. We've kept number, we've got state, um, we've got an order summary which we will be populating using flow designer. So once we've come up with a decision from decision tables and decision builder, we will set a short description which contains the sandwich that we've ordered and you know how much it's going to cost and how long it's going to take to make. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll get to see the full a full uh, view of decision builder in this and you can see in here i don't know why it says sand um rather than sandwich maybe that's just where i did not type uh everything in sandwich options where we have what are the options we're selecting from and therefore what is the sandwich we're creating so let's just save that we don't want sand in our sandwich right okay so that's our table and form that's two different um aspects to this app but what we really want to get into this is the logic and automation around this, which is the new stuff that we uh, have in Decision Builder. So let's crack on into it and I'll show you some of the new features. So let's go into Decision Builder. Dee, 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 dee. And we will call this decision making a sandwich available from all scopes. Why not? So there's a few things we need to do in Decision Builder and there's, um, I'll point out, like I say, the new Vancouver uh, features as we go through. We will be using some of them and some of them we will not, but I'll show you nevertheless. So there is really three things on this form of a Decision um, Builder table that I'd like to uh, show you. The first thing is inputs. Now, this is obviously the different attributes that we want to pass into this decision builder so they can come out with a decision. So for our example here, we want bread. And I'm going to make that a type of choice. We have an existing choice list, which is on our order table, sandwich order. And I'm just going to choose um, the bread column. I think that's quite a, quite an obvious one. We're going to make that mandatory because we need to make sure we receive a bread. Um, we also need spread. So once you've got your bread, you need your spread. Um, type of choice. This is going to look very similar now. So we're going to choose our sandwich order table and spread. There we go. And I'm going to make that mandatory. Next, after we've got our bread, we've got our spread. We need something in it. So I'm actually just going to call this protein. What protein do you need in your sandwich? Um, choice list. And again, I'm going to select it based on my sandwich order table. Obviously, you can come up with your own lists. It may well be that you store these elsewhere. Maybe um, it's up to you. In protein, I will select protein. The different options are there. Things like ham, sausage, etc. Um, I'll make that mandatory. And also, 
cheese. No sandwich is a sandwich without cheese. That is a must. It's absolutely mandatory. And um, let's just select the choice field of cheese. Right, let's make that mandatory. Right, so from an input perspective, we're done. Um, there's one more thing I want to show you because this is a new feature on Vancouver. And I'm surprised that it is because I would have thought it was there. So obviously you can use the reference um, selector here, the option for reference. And um, again, you could, you know, I could go to the, the table that we, we have for sandwich order um, if you really wanted to. And now you've got the filter. So apparently there was no filter previously. So I guess that could be good in terms of, you know, filtering the option, possible options for, um, you know, the inputs into the uh, decision builder. So apparently that's a new thing. Um, I'm not going to include it in our example, but that's the first new feature to show you from Vancouver. Next is defining your decision table itself. So first of all, we want our columns. So I'll show you what that means as we go through. So again, we'll need to kind of choose the different options that we want in here. So we want our bread. So in order to determine the result, these are our columns that we need. So I'm going to add um, another condition column for the spread. Spread. Done. We've got a bread, we've got a spread. Now we need a protein. Protein. Obviously the inputs are chosen from inputs that we have already pre-selected from the top. Makes sense, hopefully. After protein, we got our cheese. Cheese. Done. Okay, so we've got bread, spread, protein, cheese. And now we want to choose our columns in terms of what we want as outputs from this. So, for example, if someone chose bread, a white bread with mayo and chicken and mozzarella cheese, we want a result. So what does that mean? That means it's going to be this particular type of sandwich is going to cost this much and um, it's going to take this long to uh, make. So that's what I want to get to with the result columns. So to do that, um, what I'm going to do is a label. So first of all, I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to choose from a choice list for the sandwich because I've stored them on the same table. Uh, so sandwich, I'll just say sandwich name and go choice. Um, you can create a new choice list, of course. Um, I'm going to go for this one and sandwich. So I've already stored my kind of different sandwich types on my um, task extended table. And now we can add more things. So I'm going to add now price. So you can choose the currency one. There we go. So notice we're not entering the values at this stage because that actually comes underneath and so that's the next step. So if you're thinking, oh, but where, where are you putting in the values? We need to define those in the actual table underneath. And of course, we may well have seen in um, previous versions that we can export this out to Excel. And anything more complicated, you can do it in Excel and then Excel and re-import re it back in, which is good. Um, but the new one, so new feature number two, is there's a new type in here for duration. And I was going to try and use this. I'm just going to say time to make. There we go. And that you can define as, you know, hours, minutes, uh, days, uh, seconds, that sort of thing. So essentially now we have our inputs, we have our table. We now need the kind of rows in the table to determining those uh, results. So I'm going to enter a few in here. So if the bread was, let's say, sourdough, spread is mayo and uh, the uh, protein is chicken cheese is pepper jack cheese then we have the sandwich the sunny sourdough um, what price should we set this at we're going to set this at ten dollars expensive sandwich time to make we're not going to say days so this is quite annoying how it kind of hangs off screen is what it is, I guess. So I'm going to say 45 minutes. No, 45 minutes. It's not going to take that long to make, is it? Five minutes to make. Okay. Five minutes to make. Right. I'll add uh, one more row underneath. And let's go for... So obviously I could keep this going, but obviously this video will take too long. So I will say uh, a whole meal. 
one with avocado and uh, sausage and uh, mozzarella cheese and we're going to call that one the da, 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 we'll bring this over the mighty mozzarella and that's going to cost all of twelve dollars these get more expensive now um, however it's only going to take two minutes to make um, so yes yeah, so you can you understand the thing here we've got our different rows within our decision table which will end up with the result based on these selections so I guess you've probably done these in the past for things like the you know the impact and urgency calculators in the past um, maybe other things like assignment rules and things like that so this is a very good way and by the way this is a platform feature um, it can you can have as many decision tables as you like so it's not a licensable table which is fantastic news very useful for use within things like service catalog and uh, flows so you can imagine there may well be different decisions where maybe things you need to make a decision before it goes for approval for etc um, lots of different use cases out there so I'm going to save that and then what I'm going to do is show you another piece of functionality which will um, be obviously new in the Vancouver release and that's this test button so this test button wasn't there before um, I just need to remember oh look it's translated it into pounds for me lovely with <laughs> going down to that level okay um, so I want to just remember one of these choices so sourdough mayo chicken pepper jack right so I'm gonna test it by entering these inputs so sourdough mayo chicken and pepper jack and when we test it what we should have is the results that we're expecting to receive a sunny sourdough eight pounds <laughs> and five minutes to make okay so that's really really useful um, test it with the different options to make sure that something comes back so we don't want the situation where you don't have one of those possible combinations working out so I do like that test um, feature Another feature which is new, so um, I think the fourth and last feature I was going to show you, I think so, is um, the ability for you to enable drafts. So when you tick that box in here, what's going to happen is it's going to um, allow you to kind of switch between the draft and publish states on here. So at the moment, I can't now make changes to this. So you can see how it's all kind of like read only. Even if I click in there, it's all read only, okay? So it's in a kind of published mode. If I needed to go and make changes to this, then you can create a brand new draft. So it means you're not kind of editing things while they're kind of, you know, in production or in use. So I could go create draft that will allow me to um, make some changes and then publish them afterwards, if you know what I mean. So again, useful feature. Um, I'm going to turn it off for our demo. And when you do that, by the way, if you have a draft one and a published one, it's just going to get rid of the draft if you turn that setting off. So we are done with our decision table. We know it works. We've tested it out. What I'm going to do now is just add a new flow, which will be when we uh, create one of our uh, sandwich orders. Um, so we'll just call it sandwich order. When we create one of our sandwich orders, I'm going to update the short description. So this is all about okay you've got a decision table how are you now going to use it so I'm going to edit that in the flow and show you how we call our decision table they say flow design is quicker <laughs> maybe it is a little bit um, right simple uh, trigger I'm just gonna say on update um, because we are selecting our uh, sandwich options aren't we on the form so I'm going to say on update of that and condition I'm just going to say where state is work in progress that's just for the sake of the demo then you might think oh okay to call the decision uh, builder we need to call it from an action new we do it actually through the flow logic so in flow logic we have make a decision so uh, on the label, what should we call this? Um, uh, which Sarni? I don't know how far that 
term goes, Sarney. Very much used in in, uh, in uh, Britain and UK. Sarney, short for sandwich. Maybe the Australians use it. I don't know. Anyway, we divulge. Um, right, decision table. Making a sandwich. When we uh, use this, we can either run on uh, the first decision that matches or run all decisions that match. So if you need to do something repeatedly or against a loop, it may well be that, for example... We have options. So for our sandwich, if we're selecting our different toppings and you know bits and pieces that we want in our sandwich, maybe we we have more than one available. Maybe if someone just said, right, I want something on white bread. I don't care what protein's in there. I don't care what cheese is in there. Maybe we want to show all of them, in which case that meet the criteria that they've ad added in. Um, so now we want to say, right, what is our decision table inputs? So obviously we defined these before, didn't we? Um, and I'm going to pick up these from our table, our sandwich order record. So I'm going to scroll down, let's add in spread, let's add in protein, and finally, let's drag in cheese. There we go. Done. Now, this is going to come up with the different options. Um, based on the results that was in the table. Um, so if you did want to do something specific, if this was the result, you could do that. What I am going to do is, I'm actually going to create an action underneath it. So I'll show you how that um, appears. So if I just go to uh, update record, uh, update record, and I'll choose our sandwich one, and I'm going to add field value. So I'm going to set, first of all, sandwich to the sandwich that was chosen. Um, so the first decision, result, and sandwich name, I'm going to set that there. Didn't do it for some reason. Let's try that again. In you go. And then in the short description, we are just going to say where sandwich name um, maybe dash and then the cost maybe. So price dash time to make. So you can see how you can use the different outputs from the uh, decision. So it's going to be interesting to see what we uh, get back and interesting to see whether actually that's picked up from the one of the first uh, choice decisions in here. So I'm just going to go to done and we will save that. And then now we should test this out. So now we're going to test this within our sandwich order table. So let's see if we can call that flow and set the sandwich and so, uh, the short description. So I'm going to set the bread, protein, chicken and cheese as per our decision table row. I'm going to just click on save. And then last of all, to trigger the flow, remember, is to set the state to work in progress. So let's do that. Just see if, yes, our sandwich has now been set and presumably so has our short description. So there you go. So that's how we can use decision tables and decision builder to building out these kind of frameworks and decisions where we have inputs and outputs and using it within App Engine Studio. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please do share and subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot to me and I'll see you in the next one.